This is the third segment showing visual flight simulation on general purpose computers. It was shot in 1970. It ran on the Harvard PDP-1 connected to any PDP-10 that was connected to the ARPANET. It was programmed by Ed Taft and Danny Cohen. The visual flight simulation is based on a program written by Danny Cohen for the Spring Joint Computer Conference in 1967. The Spring Joint Computer Conference 1967 system ran on an SEL840 computer. It was the first interactive visual flight simulation for a general purpose computer. Orly is a digital computer flight simulation program. The pictures you see have been generated by a computer graphics system at Harvard University. Orly Towers and facilities provided by the Advanced Research Projects Agency. 79 Juliet, go ahead. 79 Juliet, final runway niner. 79 Juliet, clear to land, runway niner. Wind 0, 9 or 0, degrees at 10. Roger. Seated at the controls is a student pilot who will practice flight maneuvers such as this takeoff while the computer simulates the pilot's view through the cockpit window. Below the window you can see the flight instruments. Here we see the airplane's altitude in feet. The airspeed in miles per hour is displayed both digitally and on a dial. The markings show zero speed, stall speed below which the airplane cannot fly, and maximum speed above which the airplane may suffer structural damage. This needle indicates the airplane's rate of climb or descent. The figure here shows that we're climbing at 500 feet per minute. The instrument here is the artificial horizon and pitch indicator. Note how the needle remains parallel to the real horizon at all times and how the pitch of the airplane affects the needle's position. Here we see the gyro compass. The direction of the airplane is up at all times. We can see that we are now flying east. As we make a visual approach to the airport, we can watch these instruments. Notice that the pilot has reduced the airplane's speed to just above stall speed. The rate of descent is a comfortable 300 feet per minute. The artificial horizon reflects the minor corrections the pilot makes as we come in for a landing. As we touch down, the pilot quickly reverses power and we slowly roll to a stop. As you may have guessed, the principal use of the Orly Flight Simulator is as an instrument flight trainer. With the instruments we have seen, the airplane may be flown in the clouds. Even though the pilot can no longer see anything out the cockpit window, he still has complete information as to the airplane's attitude and motion. However, in order to find his way to the airport and successfully land in conditions of low ceiling and visibility, he must make use of radio navigation aids. We are now approaching the airport using the Instrument Landing System, or ILS, which is guiding us into the easterly heading runway. The vertical needle is called the localizer, and it indicates to the pilot which direction he must turn to in order to get onto the correct course to the runway. The needle is to the right of center, so the pilot turns right to center the needle again and get back on course. In the same manner, the horizontal needle, or glide slope indicator, shows whether or not the airplane is on an imaginary slope leading down to the runway. The needle is above center now, showing that the airplane is below the glide slope, so the pilot decreases his rate of descent to bring the needle back to center. The pilot should also watch carefully the other instruments, particularly the airspeed and altitude, but here he is too intent on centering the ILS needles and neglects to check his airspeed. The airplane stalls, goes into a spin, and is out of control. Fortunately, a crash is not too costly when we're flying a simulator. The Orly simulator also provides an instructor's console, from which an instructor may monitor the airplane's progress and change flight conditions. 
Here we see a map and the vertical cross section of the vicinity of the airport. The airport is here. The slanted line shows the glide slope for the instrument landing system. The vertical line shows the position of a marker beacon which activates an indicator on the pilot's instrument panel as the airplane passes over it. The altitude of the cloud ceiling is shown by this line. As you can see, the airplane is just breaking out of the clouds now. At any moment, the instructor may stop the simulation so as to discuss the situation with the student pilot or review the preceding flight sequence. The simulation may then be resumed where it was stopped. After landing, the instructor and trainee may review the entire approach. Here, for example, it is clear that the student maintained a good heading at the expense of controlling his altitude. The instructor controls the flight simulator by means of a computer-sensed stylus, whose position is indicated on the control panel by a small cross. To simulate instrument failure, the instructor can selectively disable the trainee's instruments, such as the airspeed indicator. Or the compass. However, all instruments may still be displayed on the instructor's monitoring screen. The instructor can also change external conditions, such as the altitude of the cloud ceiling, and even the amount of turbulence. Here we see the pilot being given a very rough ride. Finally, the instructor can set the initial position, heading, and altitude of the airplane. This, for example, allows the trainee to practice repeated approaches. To give the student pilot a sense of flying under pressure, the simulator may be run at a rate faster than real time. In fact, all flight sequences in this movie are shown six times faster than real time. flight simulator makes use of two general-purpose digital computers. The smaller of the two, a PDP-1, has connected to it a wide variety of equipment for performing high-speed interactive graphics, such as the displays and flight controls used by the Orly program. The computation for the dynamic simulation is performed on a PDP-10, a much larger time-shared computer. The two computers are connected together by the ARPA network, a nationwide network of computers located principally at universities and computer science research facilities. The Orly Flight Simulation System has proven to be successful and worthwhile for several reasons. First, of course, it is useful for flight training and especially for instrument training. 
Equally important is the fact that Orly is implemented on general purpose digital computers, making it easy to modify for experimentation in such applications as new cockpit instrumentation systems, autopilot designs, collision avoidance systems, and the like. Finally, Orly demonstrates the advantages and feasibility of performing interactive computer graphics over a network, making it possible to utilize very powerful computer resources that are not available locally. We feel that for all these reasons, the use of digital computer graphics and computer networks can significantly advance application areas such as flight simulation.